we had a little bit of a problem in that he was a smoker and getting through a joker laugh was not that easy. Was there one specific villain that you guys think you really are proud of the way you redefined him for, for well, a new generation? Well, obviously, Mr. Mr. Freeze. Freeze. Take a character like Mr. Freeze, who's basically just a gimmick, and he's kind of a joke, but add like a, a human dimension to him. So I said, so yeah, so if he was not just Freeze powers, but if he's yeah. frozen emotionally, and if there's some reason why he's frozen emotionally, that kind of became, you know, what we did with him, and we kind of applied that kind of pattern to a lot of the villains. To yeah, kind of, we give him background. Yeah. We, we even though there, there's a certain sympathy that you have for all of them mm -hmm. until they go in the third act crazy. Right, mm -hmm. right. You know. But you did that with Two Face as well. Two Face, yeah. We decided it never made sense that he, his face got scarred and that he just changed. It made more sense if he was already a split personality, and the uh, scarring uh, just let it come out. Mm -hmm. The voice work on the show, amazing. But you had a big role in in changing the voice of the Joker. I didn't know that until recently. Oh. You, you, were, you were one of the first ones to raise your hand and say, I think we need to recast Tim Curry. We had a little bit of a problem in that he was a smoker and getting through a Joker laugh was not that easy. So, so I mean, <laughs> I, 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 I never talked about it, but I love Tim Curry and he did other shows for us down the line as a, a star character. Give me but, a memorable scene from the show that really resonates with you and you say, Job well done, Alan. In the first, in the first Two Face show, I like the idea that we didn't go into Two Face until the second part of the show. And there's a scene in which he he goes to a psychiatrist, mm -hmm. having this heavy scene yeah. in children's programming. You know, people hadn't done that. I have just tons and tons and tons of good memories revolving around the first episode we did on Leather Wings. It kind of set up exactly what we wanted to do with the show to to like say, okay, we're going to plant a flag here. This is not. This is not Adam West, this isn't Super Friends, it's not, you know, the Filmation Batman. It's it's dark, it's spooky, it's actually scary. And it had a lot of action, and it had mood and mystery, it had a couple jokes. It kind of like, it was just kind of like you know, our, our series in a nutshell. So when that show, that was the first one we did, it was the first one we had animated, the first one we saw raw footage of, it's the first one we saw, it's the first one we recorded with our awesome cast. It was the first one that I heard Shirley Walker's Amazing music over on the uh, you know the Eastwoods you know recording stage over on the, on the lot, so it's like an animated you know, series with its own individual score. Yeah, an awesome enough. score. I mean, it was like you know I remember getting like you know breaking out in goosebumps when I first heard the you know the first couple uh, you know first couple bars of that first cue. So um, so it, a lot of it revolves around that. Yeah, going down to the stage and seeing you know, a full orchestra there. I mean, I, I've never experienced that before. Yeah, it was pretty awesome. It was unbelievable. Yeah.